There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a review, some thoughts anyway, on a novel by William Trevor. It is only available in this two novels in one book. The book is called Two Lives, and I have only read the first of the two novels. For some reason, they call them novellas. They're short novels. 222 pages. Is it a novella? Is it? Reading Turgenev, I read last week, and I did this as a buddy read it with Brian from Bookish, and I didn't think I was going to review it, especially since, you know, it's only half of a book. Reading Turgenev was originally published in 1991 as a standalone novel, before it was termed a novella, but at the moment you can only get it in this book, as far as I'm aware. I haven't read the second one, the second novel, this one, the second one might be a novella, it's less than 200 pages, isn't that the cutoff? Anyway, My House in Umbria, haven't read it. But I have thoughts, people, and this novel, Reading Turgenev, is leaving a marvelous aftertaste, and so yeah, I just want to talk about it, and even if I'm recommending that you buy half a book to read half of a book, read one novel. I I have to because it's a wonderful novel. Reading Turgenev is set in a rural Ireland, a small town Ireland. The Irish country girl is Mary Louise, and she lives on a farm with her parents, and they're dirt poor, Protestant, and her only dream was to move to town and work in one of the shops. So, as she's getting of marriageable age, and I believe into her maybe early 20s, which probably at that time, 1950s, she was getting to the end of her marriageable period. And she gets courted by a much older man, Elmer Quarry. And he is the owner of the family business that has been, for generations in the town, a drapery. And the story on the quarries is that if they ever get married, it's simply to have a, an heir to carry on the business. And he's maybe in his 50s or something and has never married. And so he courts her and they get married. And it's not a happy marriage. So so that's the, the back story that is progressing towards the present. But there's also another timeline uh, consisting of interleaved, much shorter chapters that is sent much closer to the present, 30 plus years later, where Mary Louise has been in a mental health institution for decades, 30 plus years, and it is now that stage of... Uh, modern Western culture, where all the, uh, where many of those mental health institutions are being deinstitutionalized, and they're uh, getting rid of all of their inmates and sending them back to their families if they have people to take care of them. So she is preparing to go back to her husband after having been in this institution for more than three decades. So the two timelines are happening side by side. One of the things that I sometimes questioned about it was that we knew kind of where the 1950 story was headed mary louise was going to be committed to the asylum and we knew that she was getting out decades later and i felt like maybe it was being dragged out unnecessarily long and maybe it should have been a novella or a short story but i now renounce that temporary criticism because william trevor introduces enough twists and surprises along the way and deepens the characterization and the atmosphere of this story that he needed that much space to tell the story that he wanted to tell. I'm not going to say much more about the plot. The writing is gorgeous. The characters are wonderfully drawn. And I finished it about a week ago and I have a, an almost completely different conception of what I read now that I've sat with it for a few days. So that's what I want to talk about without any spoilers. So Mary Louise, once she realizes she's in an unhappy 
marriage, she rekindles a, her friendship with a first cousin who lives near the town. And she had been in love with him when they were primary elementary school students. And so there's that is rekindled as well. That's all I'm going to say, and then that can't go much further, and I'm absolutely not going to tell you why. But after that, the impossibility of that has been established in the story, then Mary Louise, this is where her, she seems to go to pieces and starts to behave extremely eccentrically and does very strange things, in, including living in the attic of the house with her, not only with her husband, with, but with her two spinster sisters-in-law who treat her horribly. And she just kind of locks herself up in the attic and does some other things that are, seem to be more and more disturbing and eventually she gets committed. Now that I've had some time, and in fact, even starting 24 hours after I finished the book, I started to think, Yes, this was about mental health, but there's some something that you find out at the very end, I'm not going to tell you, that makes you question how mentally ill she may or may not have been. But then I started to think about, she was actually, Mary Louise was actually the hero of her own life. And I think in some ways, William Trevor was celebrating her agency, her independence, and her creativity in the face of a really drab uh, series of consequences from an unfortunate choice she made in her young adulthood to create the kind of life that fit her personality. And it looked strange to the outside world. It looked strange to most readers. It seemed very unusual to me as I was reading it. And then with some distance, I was thinking, you go, girl. And I think about the things that I have done to create a rich life where I can be most myself and pursue the kinds of things that I like to do or read or whatever that look probably very strange to people like my husband and my friends and whatever. Not quite like she does, but there's something there that I think that William Trevor is exploring. Not only issues of mental health, poverty, marriage, sexuality, there's all those things too, but I think when I step back from it, this is the part of it that fills me with the most joyful aftertaste. So that's all I want to say. I think that even if I can't tell you that you're going to love the second novel in this book, My House in Umbria, you should read the first one because it was one of the most thought-provoking works of fiction I've read in a very long time. Just to close, I will read you a short paragraph just to give you a sense of Mary Louise, and there's no spoilers in this short paragraph, the title, Reading Turgenev, comes from the fact that her cousin slash beloved, Robert, loved Turgenev. And she wasn't a reader, but he read passages, I don't think he read the entire novel, maybe he did, uh, Fathers and Sons to her. And it awakened an interest in her to read, but I think maybe only that book, I didn't, wasn't, or other books that he loved only, but it just became a way for her to perpetuate and celebrate the bond that she has with Robert. Here we go. Without closing her eyes, Mary Louise could see the flare of the gas jets and snowy carriages drawing up. Tall Russians conversed in rooms with polished floors. Walls were lined with mirrors, small oval tables covered with velvet and gold fringed cloths. There was a haziness in which her cousin's voice spoke, in which her own voice repeated the difficult Russian names and then through which they themselves passed back and forth like softly colored shadows. Thanks for watching.